Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and this is my November 2022 edition of my studio. I say that because I've iterated it slowly over time. And while well, this studio we actually started building in November of 2021, I moved in here in January of 2022, did a quick studio tour, but it's changed a little bit more since then. I like sharing these videos because, well, all the people who shared their behind the scenes studio tours were really helpful for getting ideas of how all this gets assembled and ways to create content and ways to make it easier. Because my goal is to create educational content, but incidentally, I kind of have to learn how to create you know, an environment that makes it easy for me to work in because my field of expertise is not cameras and everything else. Although, you know, I'm pretty interested in it as a nerd who likes to geek out about it, but the goals really make this simple. And that's a lot of my goals were how quickly can I press a button and make everything come on? Speaking of which, first, all the things that I'll be talking about, all the different cameras, I'm not going to list them out verbally here. I'm just going to link them all down below along with all the parts list. That way I don't have to spend a lot of time dwelling on it. The next thing is this little stream deck here is tied to OBS and my studio computer that all the cameras and screens share into. So we're going to press this right here. And that happened in real time. I didn't edit that part of it. This is how I switch back and forth between cameras. Usually I hit the button and switch it and I'll just splice it in so there's no dead space or me turning my head. But it's really one of the things that makes it simple for me to go back and forth between this view right here and back over to this part of the camera so I can record the screen. How I move things around on the screen, seeing as it's another computer, there's a tool called Barrier that actually lets me do this. It lets me go over and be on another computer while being on this one. I'll show that when I go to the wider view, but this is also Home Assistant, and this lets me do things like turn lights on and off right from here. I turn my entire studio on, studio computer, and because I'm in my basement, I actually moved out of my office and started working from home to, well, have my own environment and be able to do things on a Sunday without having to drive back to my office to be able to do it. it allows me to create content anytime I want, especially on a rainy 45 degree Sunday afternoon here in Detroit. I do have it telling me current status upstairs with my temperature. I can see my front porch. I can see my driveway uh, through my Synology. I've got this all tied into Home Assistant. It, it just makes it a lot easier to be able to sit down, hit a button, and then create. Now, we're going to switch over, though, so we can see everything to this. This is a uh, DJI microphone setup. If you're wondering, they are great. I just tie it to my phone and clip this on, and now we're going to switch to this so you can see the whole studio. And starting out right from getting out of my chair, essentially, this is the monitor we were looking at with that Sony camera. And I can see myself in it so I can see how I'm framed in there. Then I have this field monitor that's actually attached to my main studio camera. And yes, this is a teleprompter. It's really good for reading off part numbers and details that, well, when I have a lot of digits in there or dates, I want to make sure I'm accurate on, but I don't usually script too many things out unless I have to read something really concise. So usually it's set statically, like right now it says TrueNAS Core. Having this though is helpful to, you know, cut down on the number of mistakes I make. Behind me, TV monitor. And this TV is just so I can see what's going on. I have this keyboard if I need to control it for some reason and then barrier's not working. But usually, as I mentioned, I use that tool barrier so I can use this keyboard and mouse that's attached to this computer, which is attached to, you know, these two right here are attached to my main computer where I do my work every day and also my tutorials that I drag over to here. Once you step back a little further, get an idea of how it goes, you'll see how like the whole room is set up. Most of these are never on unless I'm recording these extra lights. Even these overhead lights are on a dimmer switch. So we'll go ahead and dim those down a little so they'll glare a little bit less on my phone. And you can see how I have everything mounted above me. This is just black pipe that I got from the hardware store. You have them cut it to length and I have it all fastened into the walls over here. And it's to keep everything as much as possible above me and isolated. So anything I do in terms of noise or setting something on this table is not going to reverberate into this microphone here or cause any shake for cameras. Now, this camera is sitting on the ground with a tripod. Makes it easier if I want to move it around to get a different angle. It's just an older stu studio camera made by Sony. As I said, part numbers are down below. And then we have just a couple cables, power cable, and then things going to it over here for all the cabling that ends up on the other side of this wall, which we're going to go next. That is an acoustic blanket in the corner to combine with the acoustic tiles on the ceiling. These are a little bit more expensive uh, when I had the drop ceiling put in to really dampen the sound in here. And then I did these on the walls. And you may not know this, 
Well, there's little push pins. That's what actually holds these in is uh, just a push pin. I never put glue on it because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And once I realized you couldn't see the push pins and the camera, well, I kind of left them in because as soon as you step back, they kind of fade into the background. So it doesn't bother me there. Now, let me turn the lights back up. The IKEA desk. People ask about, hey, is this a custom desk? And kind of. It just went and bought a couple IKEA tables, the butcher block type counters, and put them in with a couple IKEA posts. And the wiring is actually relatively clean underneath. I try to keep everything as tight to the bottom. So as I said, if I want to sweep or clean or dust, nothing's going to get tangled to go around in there. And someone will probably complain because I didn't put trim along the floor, but I don't know. It just didn't seem necessary. That's just a bath rug, by the way. Great place to keep your feet because you, the space heater next to me, it's actually kind of chilly here in my basement in Michigan winters. Now, besides all that, I do have these acoustic panels over here that are from Ikea and a big bean bag where I actually just sit and read sometimes. But this is kind of like just a big picture from the corner from my studio. Now, this looks like a window and it's actually just an egress. It's uh, nighttime outside, so you can't really see much, but it's just your regular basement egress. And then on the other side here, in case you're curious, I make the window look bigger by covering up the power panel. This door will be the door to my bathroom when I build a bathroom. All right, let's talk about the servers. All right, now we're on the exact opposite side of the wall from where I was sitting. My monitor is actually right up against that wall right there. Now, this is a lot more echoey. You're probably hearing some of the noise in the room. That is my furnace, and that is my studio computer. Some of the boxes, I try to keep things as organized as possible within a reason, not to obsess over it. Just It's nice if everything's in boxes that are transparent so I can see where things are. The studio computer has all these HDMI cards and HDMI inputs in there that come through the wall over here. The wall is black because you're seeing what is called fully loaded vinyl. It is a sound absorption. So we have drywall, fully loaded vinyl. We even stuffed insulation in the top here. The whole goal is to keep as much sound out of the studio as possible. And it's really, really silent in there. The rack is just a StarTech rack. We have a pair of TrueDance devices down here. Uh, this one's connected at 10 gig and you're probably seeing but tom that's not a 10 gig switch and you'd be correct there's a little 10 gig switch hidden back here and it's a sfp over to here now someone will always tell you that these thin cables there's always a commenter going tom there's no way to do 10 gig on thin cables which actually isn't true my computer is connected with one of these thin cables with 10 gig works perfectly fine now, my main large monitor due to the high res is connected at display port, but this is an HDMI splitter for the other one that's at 1080. Makes it easier for recording content. The HDMI comes out of my computer, goes to a splitter, and then feeds the HDMI feed into the studio computer. That way I can have a copy of everything that's on my screen being recorded from my main computer. As I said, these are two you know, separate systems. And of course, with all the noise dampening, these will ramp up when they're recording. The furnace will kick in, whether it's a uh, heating or cooling, or this will be rendering and the fans will be whirring. All this noise is completely isolated from me. Now, class, last few things are in my rack here is going to be my home assistant with the Z-Wave connector. This is what controls turning all these different things on and off, both via wake on LAN or via the Z-Wave, depending on the adapter it's connected to. Uh, I keep the cables relatively neat. The orange ones run cameras with the yellow connectors here. This is another Raspberry Pi, another Synology, another Synology, the two Synologies. This one runs my media and photos and some other stuff. This one runs my camera system. So they're all fed over to here. And then the two TrueNASs and then a UPS, which if we scroll, I think we can see that I'm using just under 300 watts uh, to power everything. Now, all these things are connected there with the exception of the studio computer, and one of the reasons these wires go here, including a cord, it turns out if you plug your studio computer into a UPS system, uh, you may end up with HDMI power differentials that cause weird lines to get in the screen, and you'll spend a lot of time chasing your tail until you realize that if you plug the camera and the computer into the same outlet, all those lines go away magic. The last couple things I'll mention is editing, and that's all done with DaVinci Resolve. I used to use Caden Live. There's some videos I have on it. I think Caden Live is a cool tool, but I regret not switching to something more professional like DaVinci Resolve sooner. It just 
well, it cut down on my editing time and really helped with my goal of getting content out faster. Uh, I found it pretty intuitive once I started using it. There's plenty of people who have videos that will help you learn how to use that tool. I'm not good enough to teach people how to use it, but I'm good enough to get things done in a relatively fast manner with it. When I say build this studio, I will mention and it's a, maybe a little bit of a sense of pride of this. We actually built the studio and me and my friends got together and we put together the idea, the drawings. We started building out the basement. The only things I actually contracted out was putting in the drop ceiling. I realized that looked really hard and not something I wanted to do and mudding that I thought I could do. And turns out I'm really bad at putting up the drywall and the mud on it and uh, that I hired out as well. But everything else from painting to even the electrical, pretty happy with the way it turned out, but I'm always looking for feedback. And hey, I even don't mind the criticism people have if I wouldn't have done it this way because sometimes that helps me gain insight into a better way to do it. So leave those comments, good or bad, down below. And as always, head over to my forums for more in-depth discussion on this topic or any other topic I talk about on this channel. Thanks. Two at a time. What did you say? Did you send two? Yeah. That works. It does. <laughs>